One of the big card making trends right now is layering stencils, and it's obviously a trend I've really fallen for. As I went through my new category in my Evernote inventory, I noticed that I had not one, not two, but three unused layering stencil sets from Pink Fresh Studio. You know I'm trying to focus on actually using all the goodies I bought last year, so today I'm sharing ideas for getting more from these types of sets. Here's my colors for today's cards. You'll notice there's more than five, even though these sets only have four or five layers. That's because I really like the look of two colors blending on each layer. I think that's going to add a lot of dimension and interest. Let's start with Modern Block how it was intended, with one color on each layer. One with Cummerbund, two with Fiesta Blue, three with It's a Girl in Coral Cabana, four It's a Girl in Flirty Fuchsia, and five Aquatini in Uptown. For my first different look, I'm trying multiple colors on each layer. Before I start, I'm going to use a Sharpie to put the layer numbers on each stencil. It really doesn't matter which order you ink them in, and these have their name and layer number etched right into them. But by adding this, I can see immediately which side is up, and that is important when you're inking them to get the design to work properly. You could do them all upside down to get the reverse design if you want. You just have to be consistent with the five layers. These stencils also have a guide etched in so that your panel is centered perfectly. I want to use the corner of my Misty to position each stencil, so I'll use the stencil guides to help me place my cardstock properly onto the sticky mat. I've put my inks into rainbow order and I worked my way from the top left corner down to the bottom right. For the second layer, I worked in reverse order from bottom to top, only because I already had that Uptown blending brush in my hand. When I got to layer 3, I decided to flip my order and start with the Uptown in the top and work down to the Coral Cabana in the bottom. I was concerned that I would lose some of the definition of the blocks if I continued putting the same colors down in the same areas. I hope that makes sense. And only now as I'm watching this back did I think of actually skipping one of the layers to get some white space and definition in the pattern. So that's definitely something else to try with this set. I don't think you could skip two layers, but one would be interesting. So here's the first two panels. The one as intended on the left and the every color on every layer on the right. It's quite a different look and I do see some loss of definition in the blocks in the second one, especially up in that top left corner, but this is definitely usable. I'll show you all the cards I made at the end. Right now let's move on to the quadrant backdrop. Here it is as intended. Layer 1, Coral and It's a Girl. Layer 2, Cummerbund and Fiesta Blue. Layer 3, It's a Girl and Flirty Fuchsia. Layer 4, Aquatini and Uptown. So now what happens if I throw in another layer, like this Falling Snowflakes mask from Picket Fence Studio? I actually really like this one because it's a mask rather than a stencil, so when you blend ink through it, the snowflakes will stay white. With many snowflake stencils, you blend ink to create the snowflakes, and that's a pretty look too, but that's what made this one worth purchasing in my mind. I put the snowflake mask down first, and then I blended the ink through all the layers. I did the multicolor on each layer again, like I did with the modern blocks earlier, and again I changed after two layers so that the inks were in reverse order. Now isn't this pretty? Even though there's lots of white space in the geometric background, your eye knows to complete the snowflakes and you see a blizzard. Now here's these two panels, as intended and layered up with another stencil. I'm not loving that one deep blue shape in the center there, but I'll factor that in when I'm finishing the card. Finally, the overlapping Geo Leaf set. First, as intended, It's a Girl in Coral, Cummerbund and Aquatini, Fiesta Blue and Fuchsia, and Fuchsia and It's a Girl. I didn't use the fifth layer, which has squares that go in between the little flower shapes. I'll come back to that when I finish the card. For my different look, this time I used a Copic Multiliner in 0.7 size, and I outlined all the shapes. I started out pretty slow because I wanted to get a really smooth look, and as I got used to it I was able to speed up a bit. So this isn't going to give me the look of hot foil, but it will give me an outline and more definition. Oops, I missed one. I just need to figure out which stencil layer that one's on. There it is. Again, I didn't use that fifth layer with the squares. Using that could definitely give you another look. I grabbed some Copic markers and colors that match my inks. I've got a whole chart with my best matches between Catherine Pooler inks and Copics. It's free and available on my blog. I'll put the link for that in the description below the video and you can pop over and download it and print it. It even has space for you to write in your own best match if you don't agree with mine. I don't have a full set of Copic markers so I just went with what I thought was closest. 
I had six colors and each flower shape has four petals, so I filled them in, leaving the centers blank and overlapping the petals where the design overlapped. When all the flowers were all colored in, I used a gray marker to add some shadows to the centers of each shape and then along the left and bottom edges. This is a quick little trick that gives the look of dimension, like each of the flowers has popped up. Then to add even more dimension, I grabbed a darker shade of each color and I colored the bottom half of each petal. This is another easy trick for adding the illusion of depth to your coloring. So here's my two panels. They're quite different in their looks, aren't they? Let's start with how I finished these two cards. For this one, I used a little square die and I cut out each flower and I popped it up on my card. This gives me a look that's similar but not exactly the same as the coordinating die, which does include those little squares that I didn't use. I added a black die cut Happy Birthday from Simon Says Stamp and some periwinkle gems from Crafty Meraki. They flash pink, blue, and purple, and they're perfect for today's color scheme. And this one's full of fake dimension. No die cutting or popping up took place. I simply added a stamp sentiment from Ellen Hudson and some more periwinkle gems to the center of each flower. Now back to the quadrant. For this one, I cut a negative frame from the panel before running it through with a 3D embossing folder from Altenew. I backed the two panel pieces with a square of black cardstock and added the new Fancy Love die cut from Simon Says Stamp. I added a little black heart that I coated with Nouveau Crystal Glaze for some shine and some more periwinkle gems. For the snowflake card, I covered up that dark blue spot that I didn't love with a black circle topped with a layered snowflake from a Jillian Vance design. And way back to the first one, Modern Block. For the first panel that was blended as intended, meaning one color per layer, I cut a black square from the center and I added a thanks die cut from Avriel. And finally, where I blended multiple colors on each layer, I used a circle in the design to help me with the placement of my stamp sentiment from Mama Elephant. I cut it with a circle die, added a black frame, and popped the whole thing up. These stencil sets all have matching hot foil plates available, and I don't have those, but if that's something you're into, you can get those and create even more looks. I think even without the plates, there's lots of ways to get different looks. Which one's your favorite? Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.